And Earthbound loading. Okay, that's fine then. I'm not too worried about some tiny ass little whistle occasionally. I'm not gonna get butt hurt over that. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that, um, for whatever reason, the really busy, pixely type backgrounds in this game sometimes wreak absolute havoc on upload rates. It's utterly insane, and I don't know why it would do that. But, anyways, here we go. So, I already started this file, um, I'm just going to delete it, because I don't need it. It was just to make sure that some basic shit was working. No big deal. New game, obviously, fast tech speed. Clearly, we're going to go with stereo audio. And, uh, hmm. I'm a boring person, so I'm going to go with plain. Let's see, I will name him... I will name him after me, because obviously I would be the protagonist. All of you in the peanut gallery can shut your mouths. Taco. Taco is good. Anyways, um, for her, I think... I don't care. Um, let's just go with Paula. I will name him... Uh, damn these short names. Default works. And finally, for him especially, I'm going with the default on this one. There's a lot of poop jokes that can come from this. I refuse to show you my boobs. You're not giving me free games of pool. Skittles. What about Skittles? I don't know if I can fit that in here. Let's see. Eh, close enough. Favorite food? Obviously. Eh, I forgot how to work a controller. That's alright. Favorite thing? Fire. Wow. 
So I saw the SGDQ of this, and they ripped it apart so completely. I'm not going to do that. I like this game. I'm just going to play through it normally. Uh, it'll take a long time. I'm okay with that. I just like playing it. I'm not going to use any glitches or any crazy shenanigans like that. Um, I just enjoy it. It's a nice little trip down nostalgia lane for me. And the story I always liked. It starts out very stereotypical, a little bit quaint, and it gets really, really dark at the end. Just chilling and sleeping. No big deal. And boom. Obviously, we have to go check out what the hell this was. I am going to pop in here. Talk to my sis. And I will try not to close out all of the text boxes immediately. I only have the game almost entirely memorized. This mom knows what's up. So, I live in Onet on a hill outside of the city, in, I guess, the closest thing to suburbs that this game has. As they say, they close down the roads constantly, and they're pretty incompetent. Obviously some heavy-duty lampshading going on with that. This dude over here jerking off by the tree. He's not going to be the first to be there. I don't think he ever gets to see it. <laughs> he should carry tacos with him, clearly. Of course it's not going to stop me. I'm cooler than you are. Yes, that is a present up on the hill. Just randomly. You'll, you'll understand shortly. I'm not going to get that one for, for reasons. This game is full of puns and silly, silly things like that. Liar. Exaggerates house. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what it says. Surprisingly, he's not talking about his dick. I don't know how the creepy dude got up there. You can sort of see the meteorite, big glowy thing. I don't know why those two are so close to it. It's probably too hot to be that close, but whatever, I guess. This motherfucker here. By the end of this, you will understand, but I just really, really, really want to punch him in the dick over and over until he dies from hemorrhaging of the dick. This cop agrees. No. Anyways, that's all I can do here. Just gotta go back to my house. 
Uh, Ant, what do you mean by usual? I'm not sure what you're referencing. Sorry, as we all know, the chat is a bit out of sync, and by a bit, I mean a lot. Now my mother is out here waiting for me, telling me to get my ass back to bed. Oh, yeah. I don't know, maybe just the glowiness? I'm not entirely sure. Um, well, that's a lie. I know exactly what they're talking about, but... I don't know why they would know what normal meteorites look like to compare to. How about that? And again, same night, woken up, clearly not meant to get any sleep ever. Now, this time, I'm gonna pop in here. And there was a gift over here. Just chillin'. So I'm gonna get it. And there's a cracked bat inside. Why my sister has a cracked baseball bat at the foot of her bed in a wrapped present? I have no idea. I don't think it really matters. I'm gonna go ahead and equip it. Get out of my way. It really is annoying. She's, she's totally right. God, you, no, you're disgusting. I mean, at least like... All right now. Maybe, maybe, maybe later. Anyways, uh, cock puncher dude is back. Picky being his brother. Fucking brown noser. That is actually a pretty good guess. That would also explain why it is cracked, because, you know, if too many of them got out of line, that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> Bestest friend. Oh, you poor fool. I would set you on fire if I could. Fine. But for him, not you. Yeah, I already got it. Surprisingly enough, not the last time we see Ness in his pajamas. Yeah, your cookie. Um, this. I don't know if it was the first, but it was one of the first modern-styled JRPGs. Instead of things like health potions, we've got food items. Um, instead of banks, we've got our sister, who later starts working for Escargo Express. Yes, Escargo Express. Now, this is one of the more entertaining things about this game, in my opinion. I can talk to, talk to animals. It's never explained, it's never addressed. I can just talk to animals. Because, obviously. And now I have a little train of mostly useless fucks. <laughs> Hello, Old Mary. And yes, I agree, the sister is a pimp. Um, this is another one of the things that's never really explained. Your father is a phone. You think I'm not being literal, but... No one's entirely sure. Even in the credits for the game, your father, Sprite, is shown as a phone. But hey, he gives me lots of money. Anyways, time, time to get the fuck out of Dodge. 
Now, when I was running a test of all of this, just to make sure everything is working, I managed to die during this part, which is horribly embarrassing. I never should have let that happen. I didn't even know it was possible. All of the enemies are animals and weird people, for the most part. Eventually some other stuff shows up, but... The battle system is pretty simple, all things said. Um, a lot of fights, I mean, you can even see, they've got an auto-fight function. A lot of fights you can get through just with that. Like, this one, I'd be perfectly fine, because I don't have anything else right now. Um, but even later on in the game, you've got, what is it, uh, 20 item slots, I think? You can defend, and you can use psychic powers on some characters, and that's about it. Now the spiteful crows, they pretty much always leave cookies, um, but that's partly because they steal them from you. Every single battle, pretty much. I was really surprised that that one didn't steal one from me. Um, okay, these guys are magical butterflies. You'll see I have 10 PP. If I had more max PP than that, I could run on this guy and he would recover them. But I don't, so it doesn't matter. Now, one of the things about this game is that, since you can see the enemies on the overworld like this, which was fairly unique, you can actually control your interactions with them to a point. They can run away if you're stronger than them, or they can chase your ass down. Um, and based on which direction your enemy and you are facing when you initiate contact, you get different swirls. So this is the standard swirl. If you catch your enemy from behind as they're running away or turned away, you get a green swirl and you get the opening attack. If you're turned away and they catch you from behind, you get a red swirl and they get the opening attack. Generally speaking, you want green or black swirl. Red swirl is typically a sign that you're about to get your ass handed to you. Yay, level up. Life up alpha! First healing spell. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this now because we're past some of the crows. They would have stolen it most likely if I had it before. This is the weakest enemy in the game, and the first one that I will get an instant win against. Go ahead and slot down some life up. As you can see from the battles, Pokey is totally useless. Um, the dog is more useful. All he does is hide and <clears throat> avoid attacking at all and then screw you over. That is his entire purpose in life. Oh, he is completely he is considerably less than useless. He turns around, backstabs you, um, and sides with the ultimate evil who is out to destroy the entire world. He is a terrible human being. He is the main human antagonist, yes. Um, the main antagonist is actually an alien, but Pokey is really the far more frustrating individual than, than, than Gygus, the main enemy. Now, you hear that there's a little fanfare whenever I get one of these guys. They have a different fanfare for these little piddly ones who just turn up for a little while, and the real ones. You're 
you're about to you're about to hear that. Now this is what's not what's uh, what's so unusual about the comet is that or the meteorite is that it's actually a vessel for a time traveling psychic talking bee. Yes, a bee. Oh, if only I could just shove him off a cliff. Fuck, that would save so much hassle. I guess the Universal Cosmic Destroyer! Thank you, Magical Talking Bee, for for your high praise. <laughs> okay, Fola, I'll uh, I'll get right on that. I'll uh, I'll make it so you can just shove Pokey off a cliff. Maybe I'll put him into uh, uh, what's it called? Hotline Miami, so I can just bludgeon him to death over and over. I don't know, man. The game... Well, actually, no. It's not a direct sequel, but they eventually made a third Mother's Mother game. Oh, yeah. The Japanese title is Mother. There was one over there that we never got here, and then there was a third one that we, we never got. See, there's the real victory, or the real fanfare. Oh, that's so bad, Ant. No, you're you're not one of those three. You are not one of them. Oh, right, a little bit more creepy talk. I have something to tell you, and only you. You're thinking it's his dick, aren't you? It, it surprisingly isn't. You're always an antagonist. Now we're about to get our first boss fight. There's no way to avoid this. I'm just gonna auto-fight this because I have no real control over the outcome. Okay, okay, okay. If I was doing RNG manipulation like the crazy fucks on SGDQ were, I would have control over it, but I'm not. Um, oh, the way that they broke the game so badly at SGDQ is that they, um, they used knowledge of how the RNG works, modified their movement and fight patterns, uh, and also changed some of the character names in certain ways, and that allowed them to predict and control how battles would play out. So like here, they managed to control it such that Buzz Buzz attacked physically more than he normally does. Um, instead of casting the... I mean, using his psychic shield over and over and over. And they also made it so that Ness's level up worked in a specific way. He got specific uh, stat boosts. Uh, 
That's just Buzz Buzz telling you what sort of enemies you'll be facing. This is where these two jackasses live. Okay. No, Picky's alright. Pokey is the jackass. Yeah, probably. Probably about children. Yep. Their father just beat them. <laughs> I never thought of it, but, um... She might be, actually. And now we know where, uh... Where all of the money that my father gives me comes from. In case you thought that uh, Buzz Buzz was going to be an OP game breaker, he's not. <laughs> She should be, really. She did just kill a psychic bee from the future. By slapping it. And the first death. And he just fades away. Because he's just a bee. Dawning of a new day. And now the real music. I always liked the music in this game. You might, you might catch me humming a little bit. God damn it, Ant. You you ruin everything. It's it's just a sign. Look, it's like a hallucinogenic, okay? That's pretty much all it is. See, it gives you this trippy ass scene, plays a little bit of sound, and that's it. <laughs> he look, man, it's been a long night. He was tired. He just like he got out there and he was like, mm, fuck it. I'm gonna I'm just gonna stand here for a bit and zone the fuck out. One experience point. Now we introduce a, uh, a character who will be with us throughout the entire game. A little bit of a creepy dude. I don't know how he does that thing where he falls from the sky. Um, maybe he's a Riddler? Anyways, fuzzy pickles, bitches. <laughs> it, you know what? It might be Ark. You're right. Eat some taco. Taco, taco, taco. why it keeps changing what game I'm playing to Mother 1 and 2. This is... This is Earthbound. Uh, whatever, fuck it. Again. And just talk to animals. But 
Thanks, Dad, for the for the liberal allowance, given that this is the 90s. Um, I don't remember doing that to any of them. Apparently, my dad is just a dick, I think. Uh, in reality, it was, um... Uh, what's his face? The dude who made the game. Um... One of the big names at Nintendo, I can't remember right now. Anyways, uh... This game was, like, basically his brainchild. So, the dad phone thing is sort of a call-out to... Dads that are not there. That are just gone all the time for work and whatever else. So, I am going to use the library more. I'm going to pop into the library real quick. The game breaks the fourth wall constantly. I'm going to grab a map, because that's all kids can borrow. The rest of it, this is basically the tutorial building. It just walks you through some basic bullshit. So, map, blah blah blah. Now I'm going to get an item. Yep, that's a mole with a shovel and a hard hat. Uh, these guys pop up through the beginning part of the game and just give some tips and advice. So, over here is the giant step, which is where we were told to go. However, someone locked it because some dickbag trashed it up. Trash cans, kind of like those gift boxes, have stuff in them sometimes. So I'm just gonna... I'm gonna take this hamburger out of this trash can and later I'm going to eat it. Because... Because that's... that's the kind of person I am, apparently. Um... Vehicles just stop. If you... if you're on the road. Just like that. I can control this truck now. Money automatically goes to an ATM machine, you have to go and get it out. 73 is not enough to buy anything. Again, fourth wall breaking. Payphones are a thing, they cost it already used, so I'm not going to use it.
drug stores tend to have items that you can use. Uh, food stores are potion shops, basically. Most of these houses are going to be closed. Um, I'm not necessarily going to try and go to everything in this build, in this place, but I'm going to try and cover a lot of it. This dude sells hints for a nominal fee. I don't really need them, so I'm not going to mess with them. I'm pretty much just messing around now, so let's go find a let's go find a thing to do. Where is City Hall? Ooh, a trash can. Just plain old garbage. No, no leftover food to take. Hotels, uh, that's where you go to heal. Nah, not really. Just some fourth wall breaking. I'm gonna go pop into Town Hall. I am... I'm not gonna go and do absolutely everything, but I am gonna try and follow the story the way that you're meant to follow it. So, I just went to the Traveler Shack. They wouldn't let me in. It's locked because of City Hall. So I'm gonna go talk to the mayor real quick, because, you know... That's the thing I can do. So I can't talk to the mayor because of the sharks, local ruffians. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go deal with them, real quick. I say real quick. This part might have a little bit of grinding. It's one of the only parts in the game that does. Um, typically speaking, uh, it's it's usually not best to try and take on the sharks until I've got around 50 HP. So I might need one more level. need 17 experience. It won't take too terribly long to get, but it could be kind of annoying. Um, whenever you die all the way, you revive at the hospital. Right now, it doesn't really mean much to me to die. Uh, so these are the sharks. These two are pretty chill. They're not going to bother me, really. Um, that one will if I talk to him. I don't think this one will at all. Uh, that dude back there is Frank. He's a dick. He, uh, he uses a knife, and he tries to cut me. As, as they are wont to do. Oh, oh god. Oh. Ah, shit. <laughs> of course you would jump to that. No, they are not furries in bonded suits. See why I want 50 HP? Fortunately, a lot of these early enemies have um, useless attacks built in. So I'm gonna try and save my life here. I don't know if it's actually gonna work. Yay! Those useless attacks really saved me. This is possibly the best one I could have gotten. He doesn't do much that's dangerous. He just swings his hula hoop um, and he laughs at me. There we go. Uh, one of the enemies that's one of the uh, shark enemies actually summons other enemies. He's pretty much the most dangerous. I always try to focus on them. So I'm gonna go run up here. I need four experience, so I'm just go kill a crow. I'm gonna go run up here, get that experience, and hopefully that'll get me enough money to buy a defensive item as well. That'll help a lot. There we go. That should be enough. Ah! One more enemy. Come on, give me, give me a snake. Give me a snake. Ha! Snake! Oh, 
Oh, that's annoying. There we go. Level four. Ooh, that is nice. And is so is that. Uh, level up stats are a little bit randomized. Not completely. Everyone has certain baselines, but um, anytime it says like "oh baby" or "sweet" or things like that, that typically means that you got above what's the average for that level. Um, so another interesting thing about this is that unlike anyone who's played a Final Fantasy game. Uh, probably just default assumes that status affecting... Oh, there we go. Uh, first instant win. It does that anytime you're too high above the enemy for it to be a challenge. Uh, anyways, so... In Final Fantasy games, for instance, most bosses, past like maybe the first couple, you can't really status affect them. They just... it doesn't do anything. Um, in this game, you can status affect almost every boss. Every one of them has like one or two things that they're not vulnerable to, but you can slap status effects on pretty much everyone except Gygus. 104. Nice. So I'm gonna get a cheap bracelet. Yes, I do. Sadly, I can't afford the T-Ball Bat, and the yo-yo is horribly inaccurate, so I'm not going to bother with that. Now I'm going to pop my ass back down here. Okay, let me make sure... That's close enough. So the cheap bracelet should let me take a lot more punishment. Ah, that's not what I wanted to have happen. This is where multi-person fights start, and I'm probably going to lose this. Um, I may try to run, but I'll... Hypnosis, the Pogo Punk... He's asleep. Hopefully he stays that way. Damn. Even worse. Now well, hopefully I can take out the skate punk real quick. But see, that defensive item helps immensely. That plus the level up with a really nice defense boost boost. So I'm gonna just pop over to the hotel. I should Ah, I'll take on another one of these sharks real quick. point of the game, I'd rather fight them individually. Uh, no, you don't, Joe. Um, he's someone that I know online. Now I'm gonna go to a hotel. Oh, 
hope I can afford it. If not, I'll just run up to my mo to my house and spend the night there. Oof. Not that much money. For the sake of not having to walk all the way home, yeah, I'll just go ahead and do it. Um, so, later on in the game, hotels start to get more rooms and more beds in each room. And also, the price keeps going up constantly. I tried that. I spent it all. <clears throat> it is, however, remember that this is the mid 90s. Prices were a little bit lower, at least. Also, it's clearly not a top rated hotel because, um,. They didn't even bat an eye at the fact that it's like a single 12 year old kid trying to get trying to get a room for a night. Really don't want to take all these fuckers on. Oh shit. The game lags pretty hard when you've got a whole bunch going on. Um, their placement, front, back, it doesn't really make any difference. It's just a graphical thing. Now you'll notice that the life bar, the HP meter, is actually scrolling instead of just instantly going to the number. Um, you can actually use that to your advantage. It can also go to your disadvantage. If you end, in, if you end a fight while it's still changing its value, it'll just stop at whatever value you end the fight at. So if you just finished healing, that works against you, but generally speaking, uh, when I do make use of that later on, when I have enough life for that to matter, it'll be to stop the battle as quickly as possible while the life bar is scrolling down. There we go. I got a, I got a advantage. A back attack, if you will. Now, since I'm not using RNG manipulation, the fight with Frank is actually um, one of the tougher fights, just because it's so early in the game, you don't have any of your abilities or anything like that. And it's also really the only one that I ever truly grind in preparation for. Um, I'm level 5, that should be enough. So I'm gonna go on ahead, I've got 60 HP, 20 PP, that gives me a pretty good buffer. I'm gonna go on ahead, heal up with my mom, and um, there's something else I wanted to do. Ah, pick up a t-ball bat, if I have the money for it. Probably shouldn't have spent that night in the hotel. Oh well. So, you don't have to speak to your father on the phone for him to deposit the money. It seems to just happen any time you win a fight. As far as I can tell, Ant, the only thing they ought to do with physical sports is the fact that I bludgeon them to death with a baseball bat.
So in a lot of ways, this game has a really crappy interface. Um, but this is one of the nice things. You can just choose to equip it, and then they'll immediately offer to buy your old one. A lot less menu fuckery. So I'm gonna pop back up this hill, eat some taco, and then go fight Frank. Oops, damn it. Well, I mean, like, what, are they gonna attack me with a wet pool noodle? <laughs> I guess you missed that part. Uh, you, you can technically get hit by the traffic, but it sort of doesn't do anything. I'll... I'll, you'll, you'll see in a minute, but the, the vehicle just sort of instantly stops and then just kind of follows you. And by follow you, I mean like it stays one pixel behind you and any time you move, it moves. It's like a really passive-aggressive driver, almost. Okay, give me some taco, bitch. That sounded a lot dirtier than it really was. That's a pretty fair point. There are some fucked up enemies later. Oh, and I guess I'll go talk to Liar Exaggerated uh, real quick since, since, uh, you know, story points. I was hoping that was an instant one. May as well have been. Just get an instant one on this guy real quick. For whatever reason with the coil snakes, you get instant ones on them before they start running away from you. I don't know why. But a couple more levels from now, those guys should just be running away. Smash attacks are obviously critical hits. You know, that's a fair point, Ant. It probably is. Because every other enemy in the game, as far as I'm aware, when you start getting instant wins, it immediately starts just running away from you. So that makes sense, that it would be a tutorial. And that's actually a pretty clever way to go about it. So I'm gonna go on ahead and life up. And then grab this guy up here. Um, they heal 20 PP. So, I mean, right now that's a lot, but obviously later in the game, it leads to some fairly grindy situations later. So, um, in case this guy wasn't creepy enough already, Instantly, this is where we should just run the fuck away. I mean, he literally has a ladder going under his house. And he lives on top of a hill with no one around. But, you're not gonna do it that way. Yeah, no, this is pretty much, like, when I was a child, this this did not seem like as creepy of a thing as it is. Um, it's horrifying, honestly. This is horrifying. This is a really deep hole. Uh, 
And I'm just following this creepy motherfucker into it. Okay, Fola, you go ahead and do that. Just don't lure children into it, okay? If you do... I don't know. I don't know. That, that would just be really weird and really fucked up. Oh, God, so creepy. No, 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 he can lure prostitutes all he wants. I don't give a fuck about that. Anyways, um, I came here not because of this creepy fucker here, although, I mean, that, that's a good thing to show. What it is, is this. This statue here. It will come back. Make note of it. This isn't the only time it shows up. Okay, enough of that little side venture. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but when you encounter an enemy, there's actually, like, a few frames where... God, I've been watching too many speedruns talking about frames. Anyways, there's a short time period where you're actually able to still control your direction. So, if you get caught from behind and you notice it quickly enough and re react fast enough, you can actually uh, stop it from being a back attack on you. I end up using that a lot every single time I play this game. A lot. Oh yeah, um, the cars. Let's see. Here's one. Ding! Car. Follow me, car. Ah! I am your master now. That shark is your master now. Anyways, I'll go ahead and murder this guy. Um, I don't use hypnosis a lot simply because the moment you hit them, they wake up. For the most part. Uh, later on I'll get Paralysis, that's much, much more useful. Design? Um, on the sharks? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, it's an S. That's an S. An S made to look a little bit like a snake, I think? I don't know. So, they chill out in an arcade, uh, clearly showing that this is the 90s, and probably designed in the 80s. to win. Also, if you'll notice, uh, animals become tamed by beating them to death, so do people. <laughs> well done.
Um, actually, surprisingly, not all of these sharks are enemies. Like, they won't all fight you. Some of them are just here to chill out. He's, he's wrong. Fourth wall breaking, again. I mean, okay, so speaking of the game design, I'm actually pretty pleased with this. If you've noticed, yeah, I, I know some of the things that are coming up. However, I haven't really had to go out of my way, even, even after saying that I would be grinding a little bit here. There wasn't much in the way of grinding. More fourth wall. <laughs> You're right, they really don't. The tunnel snakes rule. Okay, I'm going to down a can of fruit juice. Do I have any cookies? I do. Okay. It has the typical trope of the protagonist never speaks, um, but it's a little bit lampshaded here, which I find entertaining. So, as you can see, motherfuckers got knives. I'm just a kid. Um, fortunately I have a baseball bat, so I'm gonna bludgeon the shit out of them. Again, nothing there really yet, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna beat him. Beat him up. Uh, so, when he knocks down my guts, uh, that lowers my critical, critical hit chance. Branched a knife at me. It's pretty not cool. So I'm gonna hit him with a baseball bat. That's, that's actually incredibly unfortunate. I'm gonna eat a hamburger. <laughs> Come out swinging is much preferable to brandishing a knife. You should... Ah, oh, damn it, dude. There we go. Well, that was a pretty crappy level. <clears throat> so, he summons... he sticks his robot on me. Now, robots are pretty common in this game. Um... I'm gonna... I'm just gonna have to open up like this. Now, this guy, he's pretty tough. He's got some strong attacks, however... Um, the main advantage here is that after certain attacks, he has to put out a burst of steam. Which gives me room to operate. There we go! So, now that I've beaten the shit out of this dude, and destroyed his robot, 
I can just come over here and, um, and just hang out for a bit, and all of my shit's restored. Because that's how, that's how this works, apparently. So now that I beat him up, I'm going to go talk to the mayor. Who is a cunt guzzling dickbag. And uh, get the key. Or the shack so that I can go do, go do other things. I'm gonna ignore the secretary who is useless. Haha, <laughs> suck it! Pokey, it's Pokey. Don't get them mixed up. Picky is actually pretty cool. Pokey is the dick ass. And yeah, you know what? It could be. He might be related. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, cool. So, I've got all of that shit, I got a bit of money, I don't need... I don't need any more items, Steam just made a noise at me. I'm sorry, Skype. So, sorry about that, I didn't expect that to happen. Um, I'm just gonna double check, cause I can't... yeah, it's just a cold remedy, okay. So, some of the status effects in this game are, are standard RPG things, like, like paralysis and hypnosis. Um, but then there's other ones uh, th that are pretty unique to this game, at least were at the time. There may be other games that do the same thing now. But, um, one of them is a, you can get a cold. You can get the common cold. Um, you can also get heat stroke in the desert. Um, and actually, Ness can become homesick. Um, you'll end up seeing all of those eventually. Getting a cold is kind of like just being poisoned, though, as far as effects go. Uh, heat stroke is also like being poisoned, but it's a bit more severe. Um, there is also, separately, poisoning. Um, being homesick actually stops you from using certain things. Ness sort of gets mopey and bitchy. Um, but then again, he's a 12-year-old boy, wandering the world, saving it from, you know, the ultimate destroyer of the galaxy. So, it's kind of understandable. So, this is the entrance to the giant step. Uh, we got here a rowdy mouse. Their normal attacks are useless. They do 1 HP damage. Or they miss. They don't have a lot of HP or defense or anything like that. However, they do that. They have incredible amounts of guts. They use smashing attacks constantly. They also give a decent amount of experience points. Yep, lots and lots of smash attacks, but that's okay. They're not so bad. They don't worry me too much. I'm gonna pop in here. There's a couple of uh, items. One item, sorry. Skip sandwich. Another one of those points about the game that's a little bit unusual. The skip sandwich, um, it makes you move faster.
There's an improved version of it, makes you move faster for longer, I think. Anyways, I don't usually use them a whole lot. I don't particularly need to move that much faster normally, but they're useful for escaping from enemies when you're in a bad situation. Those little dots on the ground are actually enemies. See? Singularly, they're harmless. Um, collectively, they're not that dangerous. Um, but they are excellent experience mills. They're worth, I think, 10 experience a pop, and they will continue to summon more of themselves. And I can kill them in one hit. They barely do any damage. Yeah, pretty much. So, I mean, if I run into a singular one of these guys, um, it's an instant win. But they always spawn in groups. Let's see, 108 XP from four of them. So that's closer to... Yeah, that's 25. 27, I guess. There's always a slug in here. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's an ant. No, no full heal on level. It increases your maximum HP and PP, and it'll roll up yours to match that. So, like, if you gain 14 max, it gives you 14 HP. Um, but it doesn't heal you. You have to take care of that yourself. Ah, there's nothing in here. Always forget that. I'm playing with an Xbox controller, I'm used to playing with an SNES controller. The ants are like the slugs, but they're stronger. Right? This is a pretty epic future, isn't it? Or future, past, uh, whatever the fuck it is. Um, but yeah, they got a cure for the common cold. It's pretty fucking great. doesn't always remember who you were targeting. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's nice. Attack slugs, man. Attack slugs. I just realized that this naming is going to be horribly confusing. Oh, that was a terrible idea. There is an actual sci-fi move in this game. This is Ness's main attack. It's completely different from that. But it's based on whatever you say that your favorite thing is. So this is one of many... It's not really a butterfly room, but it's one of the first places, it's the first place in the game where these butterflies spawn continuously. Alright man, see you later. So if I, yeah I max it out, but if I pop out of here and then go back, I should... Oh, I guess not. I guess I don't spawn here every single time. But any in any case, typically speaking, you'll go in, go out, and there'll be another butterfly waiting for you. There's several rooms like that throughout the game, and you can use them to replenish your PP. Typically, they pop up right before bosses. Um, the game doesn't have... Uh, save points typically before bosses, but it gives you those butterfly rooms. They're kind of annoying and tedious to replenish yourself off of, but it works. Holy fuck. not expect to get punished like that, good god. But that's okay, I've got... got 20 something PP, it should be fine. Enemies in this game do have limited PP, just like you do. So these guys are using life up, they can only use it I think twice, and then they run out of PP. Um, some enemies will try to use psychic powers even when they're out of PP, others won't. I don't think these guys will. So this is what the bosses look like for the, uh, for the various uh, your sanctuary locations. This one happens to be, and I think I can beat him. Should be okay. Two hamburgers. 50, yeah, I'll save that. 100% beef, of course. It is literally a beef patty surrounded by beef with beef as the condiments. Take it from me, if you dare. So you can see there's an antoid behind him. That thing will heal him. So I'm going to open with my brand new psychic ability, partly just to show it off. It's, I think it's enough to kill them. I can't remember for sure. I'm going to find out. Anyway, this motherfucker hurts. Yep, it is. Cool. So now he doesn't have any of his healing bus buddies, which is fortunate. Ah, hell. Oh, that sucks.
So, dying in this game, at least this early on, doesn't make much difference. Um, you lose half your life. I mean, sorry, half your, half your money that you have on you. Any money in the ATM, you don't lose it. You pop it back where your last save was, you don't lose any progress at all. Um, so yeah, I've got half of my money because I had 58 before. If I had friends with me, they would spawn as ghosts, and I would have to go to the hospital and heal them. That costs a lot of money. Also, you spawn with no PP. So I'm just gonna go in and do this. Sleep a night. Empty out my carried cash. That way if I do die again, which I hopefully won't, that was kind of a fluke. Oh, yeah. The headlines that they read you actually do change based on what you do. May you're taking credit. <laughs> yep. So I'm just gonna run the fuck back up there. Screw it. I wanna get through this guy. Actually, I'd really like to get through a nap before I go to sleep, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. The police chief is kind of a dickbag. There's a lot of dickbags in this game, really. Oh, thank God. Oh, 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 oh. Forgot to talk to these guys. They have an item for me. There we go. Thank you. <coughs> that might have helped. Travel charm doesn't increase your defense at all. However, what it does do must be equipped on your body. Protects you from paralysis attacks. So that is actually kind of useful. Uh, paralysis is one of the first effects that you run into in the game. So being immune to that is um, is very useful. So I'm just run through this cave again. Don't have to stop in any of the side areas. Hopefully, I don't run into too many enemies. Yep. So much for that. There we go. He's dead. <clears throat> Set this rope again. Yay, butterfly! So, oddly enough, um, comparatively speaking to other RPGs, your main character is actually your main healer. Um, I mean, he's also your main physical damage dealer, but he's your main healer as well. Um, and most of his psychic effects are either healing, support, or um, debuff. His offensive attacks, he's got his, uh, his main attack, which is like sort of key to the game in some ways, but it's not really that great. It's overpriced for what it does. Um... But mostly what he does is physical damage and healing, which to me is pretty unusual. I guess he's sort of like a paladin.
You'll notice that item space is extremely limited in this game. Um, due to the fact that equipped items stay active in your inventory and you only have those visible spaces, which I think is 20. Um, each character can only hold 20 items. And key items, um, equipped items, every single item takes up a slot, no matter what it is. So inventory management is actually extremely crucial. Um, it, it, it ends up being that your healing items wind up having far more value than your psychic ones later on. Psychic points are much more replenishable. Aside from instances like this where it's a boss fight. But I'm still gonna go on ahead and open with that. Blah blah blah. Open with this. That's not very useful. <clears throat> That's actually a pretty, pretty handy thing for him to use on me. I'd rather take the one defense down rather than 20 to 30 HP. Shield Alpha cuts my offensive powers down substantially. It's annoying. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Ant. Like, I'm not necessarily disagreeing, I just, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. Interestingly, whenever it says that the shield became stronger, it's not actually that it became more effective. Uh, what it did is it increased or lengthened the amount of time that it'll stay up. The number of uh, combat turns. Oh, you fuck. It's not my night. It's been quite a long time since I did the giant step, really. I haven't played this game in quite a while. I forgot that I used Psy Magnet. Makes it pointless to hold on to your... Hold on to your psychic points for later. It's better just to burn through them all with an opening salvo. Go pick up a couple hamburgers and go fuck his ass up now. Now that I remember that. I don't actually know how Ness isn't 500 pounds. By the end of this game. Yeah, I guess that's pretty valid. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess I could see that. I guess I could see psychic powers using using calories. I guess the power has to come from somewhere. It's 
let's get $100 for the hamburgers. I don't know how much that is, I don't remember. Food is really expensive in this game for some reason. I mean, seriously, fucking eight dollars for fries, fourteen dollars for a hamburger. Okay, cool. Full of hamburger. Very strange world. <clears throat> yeah, their economy is pretty fucked up. Maybe this is like actually in the middle of a famine? I was gonna use a skip sandwich here. Fuck it. I'm, I'm tired of this taking forever. Ah, goddammit. I don't know, man. Room service usually costs additional money. Typically not free. So as you can see, when you get out of a battle, you have a while where you're flashing. You're untouchable. Incorporeal at that time. It can be used to great effect during dangerous situations. Um, and since I don't really plan to take a whole lot of grinding time in this, there could be more of those than I'm used to. Could be interesting. Let me kill that first. Fuck that mouse up! I'm just gonna stroll- ah, oh, goddamn. <laughs> now what's kind of fun is to get like an entire screen's worth of these guys, and then drop Psy Special Alpha or Beta or whatever, and kill all of them in one hit. Too early in the game to do that though because the psychic points are too valuable. God, there's so many of these things right now. As you can see, the game lags a bit when there's a whole lot of enemies on screen. It's not that big of a deal though. Get over here, butterfly. Give my power. Oops. Not what I meant to do. Okay. Yay, a uh, cookie. That's 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 useless. That's useless. God damn it. Okay. I hate when they call for help like that. I abandoned the cookie! Oh, I'll love you forever, cookie. In my heart. In my heart.
Okay. No time's a charm, right? Sadly, no. Uh, typically I try to just always leave a single slot open at least. Didn't do it this time. Just gonna drop this again. Took way more times than it should have. Oh well. Offense by two, guts one. Healing healing alpha. So as I said, he's pretty much the healer. Um all of these things give you little hints on what they do. He's got life up alpha, which heals HP, and then he's got healing alpha. And I believe, if I remember correctly, he's the only one that manages to get healing Omega, which heals everything, including death. Um, none of your other characters can get that, I don't think. If any of them can, it's Poo. But I don't think he does. No, it doesn't. Nothing, nothing FFF7 style. So, there are very, very few points in this game where you just randomly get a full heal. The um, game is very stingy about that. Um, I guess it does kind of fit with your puzzle theory. This is one of them. Uh, the sanctuaries, and there's eight of them in the game, uh, as Buzz Buzz said, on his dying breath. Uh, whenever you get to one of them, you fully heal. It's not really very useful. The other effect that they have is that after you've beaten the boss of a given area, um, all of the enemies in the dungeon, cave, whatever leading up to it, start running away from you. Now, if you run into them, they will still fight you. <clears throat> You're not stronger, necessarily. It's just that you've beaten their boss and you took the power of the sanctuary. So, now they run away from you on the map. <laughs> So you can avoid them on the way out. It's kind of useful sometimes, mostly... whatever. Just kind of a time saver. <laughs> because I can. I can't read, officer. Anyways, this is where you get to see that the Onet cops are complete dickbags, much like most other people in this game that you encounter. Whether or not that's truly Gygus's influence, 
I'll leave up to you to decide. Personally, I think they're just dick bags. I don't know. Probably, probably just dick bags. Anyways, I'm going to. Let's see. I guess I'll swing by the mayor real quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is Florida. Maybe this whole game is just Florida. It'd be strange, but... <laughs> this way you get to see... Yeah. See? He's just kind of a jerk. Conveniently, I have enough. Dun dun dun. There actually is a swamp, yes. There's also dinosaurs. So, I mean... Take what you will from it. Oh yes, the uh, country that the game takes place in is called Eagleton. The dinosaurs aren't in, in the swamp. They're, um, be below? Below the swamp. Yeah, yeah, below the swamp. <laughs> this is what kids hear when adults are talking. Beat up the local ruffians. Clear out a nuisance from a cave. Simply ask to go to the next town. And what do I get? I get forced to fight. The cops. In close quarters combat. As a 12 year old boy. I think I got a lot of hamburgers on me. Also psychic powers. Oh fuck. A 
I swear, I swear, I'm not, I'm not terrible at this game. <laughs> you know, that could be it. Maybe, maybe this is all just a hallucination. I get my due! My five minutes of fame. I'm gonna go beat up the cops. Try not to fuck it up this time. Sorry about that. To be fair, I am bludgeoning them all with a baseball bat. Motherfuckers hurt. I also have psychic powers. Also, come on, as corrupt as this government and police force really are, do you honestly think that they're gonna let slip that a 12-year-old boy beat the shit out of them? That's another interesting thing. Um, in a lot of games, your heals, your healing abilities, they heal a set amount, always, every time, um, or they're they're based on some specific stat. In this one, unless it specifically says that it maxes your HP or heals everything, it's it's a range. Like this one, Life Up Alpha, it heals from like I think 85 to 120 something in that range, but it's always a little bit random. <laughs> you know, that's a fair point. They probably did end up doing that. I could see it. I could, I could definitely see that. I'm just gonna be cautious here and heal. No particular reason not to. No. That motherfucker's too chicken shit to do anything. Bludge them. Fuck it. That that is actually um that is the single easiest case of that fight I have ever run into. I've never seen it go that smoothly. Fuck the police!
<laughs> Fourth wall. Oh god damn it, Ant, that's terrible. Okay, that's a nut. I have I finished a nut. <clears throat> So I'm gonna go down to the roadblock. Wait, no, I went too far. I'm gonna go down to the roadblock and get my way to Tucson. By the way, notice uh, the first, I think, four towns. There we go. Cool. Oops. Anyways, the first four towns are named numbers, basically. Onet, one. Tucson, two. Threed, three. And Foresight, four. After that, it goes off of that, that, that theme. So this is one of those points where inventory management is really critical. The mice own the house, by the way. If you've played Pokemon, which I'm sure you have, they're basically escape ropes. They're, they're actually kind of handy. Um, I don't really need it for a while, but there's only certain points in the game where you can get them. Ramblin' Evil Mushroom. I want to see if these guys do their really annoying attack. As it shows off another... There it is. He spored me. Which is kind of gross. Um, you see I've got that little icon. What we'll do is occasionally that happens. I feel funky and sometimes it works out fine and I do what I'm supposed to do and I kill things. Other times like I'll use a random move or I'll attack myself or one of my allies which can be terrible. Awesome. Shield Alpha. Um, the other thing that it does, it puts that mushroom over my head in the map, and that's just kind of silly. But it also will randomly change my control scheme. Um, so, all of a sudden, down will become up. Or down will become left. However, one of the interesting things about this particular status effect is that unlike almost everything else in the game that's a status effect, um, you can't get rid of it with healing. You can't get rid of it in any of the normal ways. And even if you go to the hospital for it, which I'm about to do, uh, the doctors can't fix you and neither can the faith healer that conveniently chills out. Oh, there it goes. It changed it. Um, up, up is right. Up is right. Right is down, so it shifted it all. Yeah, shifted it all one. Ah, oh, damn it. One to the right. There. But even the faith healer who, you know, conveniently chills out in the hospital won't be able to fix me. Or at least he won't recognize it as a problem. Instead. Oh, god damn it, I think I changed it again. There we go. Instead, he will buy it. He will buy the mushroom off of my head. 
for $50. So that's cool. On the downside, that is literally the only way to get rid of it. it makes them possibly the most annoying enemy in the entire game. Also, uh, this is Mr. T. Oh yeah. So, I could get a bicycle here, which is fun. I am going to. I'm gonna get a bike. I won't have it for long, but... Exactly! It's, it's a really interesting thing. I've never seen anything else do it, but it's kind of cool. So I just got a bicycle for free, just for strolling and talking to a dude. Can't ride them in caves. Don't know why. Laws of physics dictated, I guess. Um, so there's a department store here. It's not huge. It's kind of small, but it's got a lot of good items. So I'll be visiting that in a bit. Um, it's also got a big park. Um, and a whole bunch of other things going on in this town. However, I'm not going to get to those right now. Uh, it's 2 a.m. So I'm just going to go to this hotel. And, uh, I think it's $50 a night? Yeah. Crash. And you notice there's two beds now. Ghosts found to inhabit Tunnel to Threed. It's not wrong. Yeah, this is a dude. So if I sit here and talk to him over and 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 over, and over. And over. here we go. You get uh you get fifty dollars. Refund your hotel room. He only does it once, but still, it's free. So, I'm gonna call Dad. Just shy of a grand. At 12. So that's cool. And... Oh, well, whatever. That's where I'm gonna call it for now. So, I'll, um... I'll do this again later. But for now... For now, I'm done. That's the first town. Tucson takes longer. Probably be, assuming I don't fuck it up, um, probably be another couple hours to do it. Um, but, we'll see.